What's up guys? So today's video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of maintenance. It's just very basic maintenance, but I figured since I'm doing it anyways, that I would take a video and show you my procedure. So today's vehicle, 2014 Ram 1500 with the Hemi 5.7 liter. And I'm just doing a very basic oil change, but using um, good quality stuff, of course. So I'm using the Mobile One uh, 5W20, nothing new, nothing crazy, but just the tried true 5W20. So we got two jugs of that. Uh, I don't really mess around with oil filters, so I just go with the Mopar, the OEM one, and of course an oil drain pan. So the hood is already popped. Let's go ahead and first things first, basically, we'll go ahead and crack the drain bolts, get under there, and we'll let the oil start draining. And one thing to note too is you don't want to have your engine too hot, so the engine's been off for at least an hour, but it was uh, it was only a short drive over here, so it's not ridiculously hot because you don't want to burn yourself or anything like that, and you know make it make it crazy. So fortunately, I just have a piece of cardboard that I slid under the front, and I have the pan. I'm just going to slide under there, take off the drain bolt, you know, take the oil out, and keep going. Okay, so as far as the drain bolt, honestly, there's a million different ways you can do this, but I like to go in through the driver's side, just slide under here because. The drain bolt you can see is right there so the drain bolts almost behind the rear front tire so um, that's why I go in from the side instead of sliding all the way from the front but I leave the front for the oil filter so let's go ahead slide in there and crack that loose okay so this is a 13 millimeter so grab a socket and make sure it's a six point not a 12 you don't want to be rounding this stuff off so try to get a six point on there it shouldn't be too tight but that's all it took to crack it loose. And of course, get your drain pan lined up. And because we didn't uh, get this engine too hot, but we warmed it up, like I said, we're not gonna scold ourselves here. So, we'll get this ready to fly out. And there we go. So we'll go ahead and let this drain. Once it's done draining and it's basically a slow drip, you can either sit there and let it drip if you want forever, but I consider that pretty well drained. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my drain plug back in. And I'm sure there's an official torque setting for this, but honestly guys, it's just common sense. You're just gonna go snug on it until it stops and you're not gonna wanna be hanging off the end of this, but that's as tight as it is, and you're all set. All right, so next is the oil filter. A lot of people seem to be a little bit upset about where this is located, but I don't really think it's the end of the world. It should just be hand tight, as long as the last person didn't overdo it, which mine is, and you're gonna wanna have your oil catch pan underneath, like mine is situated right now. It is gonna trickle across the frame and probably the power steering rack, which is maybe why they're upset about it, but I don't think it's really a big deal to be honest. You just wipe it up once you're done. So I like to spin it off a little bit. I'll let the oil drain out mostly first. Like you're kind of seeing and probably hearing right now. So now we'll loosen it the rest of the way. And the tricky part, if there is a tricky part to this, is just trying to get it out of here without dumping it and making a mess. Because of course with the oil filter being upside down, it's going to be full of oil. So. We're going to get it out of here, hopefully, as cleanly as possible. Okay, so it is off now. You can, of course, hear a little bit more oil coming out. And I usually like to bring it down through here. And out the bottom and into your pan. Okay, and one thing to note is make sure that the gasket didn't stick to the um, face of the actual... Uh, housing there. I have seen that before where you take the filter out and the rubber gasket gets stuck to there and then you go ahead and put on your new filter and ends up leaking all over the place because you end up having two gaskets. So make sure that that doesn't happen to you because it has happened to me. I don't know if that's just the maybe cheaper filters or whatnot that seems to happen on but okay so we got our new filter here. Um, some people like to put oil on the gasket face, but I just leave the old face wet with the oil and that's enough to lubricate this new gasket. So go ahead and put it in here. Go 
ahead and just snug it down. Again, hand tight's all you need with this, guys. Some people like to get a wrench on here and go ballistic on it, but it's completely unnecessary. It's not going to come loose or vibrate loose as long as you go hand tight within reason. Alright, so that's it, guys. We'll wipe up our mess and we can go up top and start filling with oil. Okay, let's go ahead and get our oil jugs ready. And just off topic, whoever designed the lid on this mobile ones should be fired because I don't know why it's so hard to take off there and why this is such a ugly design, but anyways. We're gonna go ahead and take our tin foil stuff off the top, the seal. And we're all set to pour this in here. Unfortunately, I don't have a funnel here right now, but we'll make the best of what we got. All right, so one jug of these five quarts basically takes it to the bottom of the fill line. So of course you're gonna need a second one because it takes about seven quarts of oil, or I think that converts to 6.6 .6 liters or somewhere around there. But always make sure to check your specific gear. And as I struggle with this ridiculous cap that I was complaining about a second ago. But again, check how much oil yours uses. And even still, I always usually like to be safe than sorry. So I always add oil and then I check it with the dipstick, of course, just to make sure I don't overfill it. Um, of course, you're going to still have to start the engine to uh, fill the oil filter, which is going to bring your oil level down a little bit. But um, even still, you don't want to overfill it. So always check it. Let's go ahead and get this second bottle in here. And I was surprised by my pouring abilities with the first one that I didn't spill it. Let's do it again with the second. So we are pretty much almost to the top of the fill line, maybe a little less, but we're gonna go ahead and start it and it's gonna drag it down again too. So let's go ahead and jump in and start it. It's about seven quarts in it right now. Of course, make sure you put your dipstick and oil fill cap on before you start it. Okay, so we're in the truck, of course. Start her up. We'll let it run for a second. At the same time too, I'll show you guys how to reset your oil indicator here once it boots up. Okay, so to reset your oil change interval, basically you're gonna cycle through till you see this truck indicator here. You're gonna see a picture of your truck. Again, you can cycle up and down, and then you probably have to cycle left and right, so you'll see like gauge summary, oil temperature, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you're gonna see oil life, of course, that's the one we want to get to. And you're gonna see a little indicator at the bottom says hold to reset. So kind of this little play looking button. So um, it looks like it's a 10,000 mile interval that mine set up at least. I don't know if it's variable, but that's the way mine set up. And I like to do things a lot sooner, but I never reset it the last time. It just never came on, of course. So um, you're gonna go ahead and hold this little play button and you're gonna see it say that to reset it the engine must be off with the ignition and run so we're going to turn it off we're going to let our foot off the brake accessory run and it's going to go ahead and tell us all this stuff of course my service tire pressure system is still on but hopefully eventually i'll get that fixed but it doesn't bother me probably as much as it bothers you guys Okay, so here it is. You're gonna see my tire pressure stuff and that's what's gonna come up first, but something else is probably gonna come up for you. So you're gonna use these buttons here to cycle left and right. Trans temperature, oil temperature, and of course oil life. So you're gonna hit this play button here, hold it. It's gonna say cancel or confirm reset, cancel or okay. We're gonna scroll down to okay. Then we're gonna hit this play button again. Okay, now we have 100% oil life again. So let's go ahead and recheck our oil level and we should be able to wrap up. And it looks like we're just at the bottom of the safe zone. So let's go ahead and add some more oil. And like I said before guys, I like to be a little bit cautious on my oil filling procedure. So you probably could fill it right up. So we should be able to safely add about another quart with it being at the bottom of the dipstick. 
take it out. Yeah, we're pretty much at the top or three quarters of the way up the safe mark. Of course, when it heats up, it's gonna expand a little bit. So I think I'm happy with that. Double check. Perfect. So now it's pretty much at the top of the safe mark. So we are all done. Insert our dipstick. Put the fill cap back on. Wipe up any drips we got here. And that's it. As always guys, thank you for watching. If you did like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe. Lots of truck stuff, lots of car stuff on this channel. And I'm always trying to help you guys, um, save you guys money and do cool things with trucks and cars. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification that's beside the subscribe button and it'll let you know when the next video comes out. We're currently on schedule to be putting up new videos every other day and I'm sticking to that schedule. So lots more on the way guys. Thanks again for watching and take care.